Now, what we've discovered through time is that what perhaps is responsible for this spectrum of severity is the amount of SMN deficiency that these patients have. So the patients who have the most severe deficiency tend to be the patients who are the most severely affected, whereas the patients who have milder deficiency are likely to be less severely affected. And part of the evidence for this is actually the SMN2 copy number. So patients who have SMA are missing SMN1, but they have the second gene, SMN2, which can produce this protein, but does so at a much lower efficiency. And here's some of the data showing that type 1 patients typically have two copies of this SMN2 gene. And type 2 and type 3 patients tend to have three or four copies. And as a result, we can see patients who have mild, moderate, or severe forms of SMA. And this is a graph from a review by Sumner and Crawford. And this illustrates, based on, on perhaps what you might just think of as a, an abstract concept of motor function, but I think it's quite illustrative to show you that patients with SMA can have varying degrees of weakness. And in fact, I think what it also illustrates is that many of these SMA patients even though they have a progressive disease, can acquire motor function, but it's really the difference between what they have relative to what they would be expected to have, the normal individuals. So therefore, the difference between the red curves versus the blue curve here, which illustrates the degree to which motor loss has accumulated in these patients. And once again, going back to this slide that illustrates the number of SMN two copies and its correlation with the type or the severity of SMA that these patients have. You can see that the more copies of SMN2 that a patient has, the more likely that they are going to have a milder deficiency and therefore have a milder course of the disease.